Hey everybody, this is Professor Mankowski, and in this video we're going to go ahead and we're going to work the last question number five in our chapter six worksheet. So I'm going to bring up our white screen again, our whiteboard. Okay. The average salary in part A, the average salary of graduates entering the actuarial field is $40,000. The salaries are normally distributed with a standard deviation of $5,000. Find the probability that an individual graduate will have a salary over $45,000. Okay, to define the symbols for the $40,000 that's mentioned in terms of the average salary. So that means $40,000 is probably going to be my population average meal. Now, for part A, there's no information of a sample yet, so that's how I know, uh, that's how I know it's not X bar. For $5,000, I'm gonna take a look at where they mentioned that in the question. They're talking about standard deviation, so $5,000 must be equal to my sigma. So I'm gonna put in that this is gonna be my sigma here. Okay, at $45,000, they're talking about an individual graduate when they mention the $45,000. So that tells me that that $45,000 has to be my X value. And in notation, what I'm trying to do is I need to find the chance that I can be greater than $45,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the probability that X will be bigger than 45,000. Now, based on the same process of elimination that we learned in the last few videos, it's going to turn out to be the case that we're going to end up using our formula on the far left side. And that's because we certainly don't have an area that's been given. We don't have a probability that's been given to us in question. And in part A, we don't have any information about a sample size. So let's go ahead. Let's start to configure our normal distribution curve because they've mentioned we're normally distributed. I'm going to do a... Uh, curve sketch down here. And in the center, 45,000, or rather 40,000. And my X value of interest is 45,000. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shade in the area I need to find. That's the chunk I'm after, the greater than version. And the only um, challenge is that I don't have a greater than probability Z table. So I'm gonna have to work in terms of less than area. So let's see how things work. Let's get our Z formula moving. We're gonna say Z equals X minus mu, and our X value is 45,000. Our population is averaging 40,000. And our standard deviation is equal to $5,000. So our Z value is gonna end up being 1.00. Now, if we look that up on our uh, Z table, we're gonna find that the matching area comes out to be, um, let's see, 0.8413. So we're gonna sit that right here. Now, if we take a look at the area we need to find, this part down here, that's just the minority of the curve. And they can't hold 84.13% of the curve area because it's too tiny a shape for that. So it must be true that what we have to do is we have to do one minus 0.8413, which is gonna be the case with greater than probability. So we're gonna write in our answer is gonna be equal to one minus 0.8413. And if we do the math on that, we end up with 0.1587. And that's gonna be our final answer for part A. Now let's take a look and let's see what happens when we go through part B here. Let's make a little space.
Okay, and we're going to indicate that we're done with part A, and we're on part B now. Okay, so the new information in part B is that they're talking about a group of nine graduates. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write down my nine. We'll have a group average over $45,000. So here's going to be, uh, here's my $45,000. Now the nine is going to belong to a sample size because they're talking about nine graduates. So nine is equal to my N and this time $45,000, they're saying a group average. So they're trying to give me my X bar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this down as X bar. And in terms of formulas, since they're now finally asking me for the probability that a group can average over 45,000 bucks, I'm going to put in to get ready for the formula X bar, the chance that X bar is going to be greater than 45,000. And there's only one formula that's going to work the probability of sample average that has to be the one on the far right, our central limit theorem. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set up my curve sketch. And the center of the curve, we're going to put in that 40,000 again. And my 45,000 is right here. And they're going to shade an area that we're looking for. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to fill out my Z formula, my central limit theorem formula. And I'm going to say Z equals my X bar is $45,000 minus my population average, $40,000 divided by my population standard deviation is 5,000. Just like so. And then I have to put my, uh, rather not $5,000, sorry, that's going to be, make that a little more clear. And that is $5,000, it just needs to appear better. 5,000. Now I have to write that over the square root of my sample size. So that's gonna go in as a nine. When I work this out with mathematics, I end up with a, let's see what this comes out to be, 3.00. And when we go into the Z table, the less than area should be pretty tiny because three standard deviations is quite far above the mean. And the area we get back is 0.9987. So that's going to sit up here, 0.9987. So my final answer would have to be just like we saw in part A, 1 minus 0.9987. So I'm going to put in 1 minus 0.9987. And that's going to come down to 0 0.0013. And this is going to be our final answer. Thanks for watching.